Hey there, Calvary Junior Youth. I hope you are all doing well and that you've had a good week. If you don't know me, my name is Wyatt. I am the Director of Student Ministries here, um, and I am going to be taking you through the lesson for today, for this Sunday morning. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't watched uh, some of the other lessons, right now we're in the middle of a series called Salt and Light. Um, and if you don't know, there's a passage in the Bible, it's a really famous passage, in, uh, in the New Testament, in Matthew 5, and it's during Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is this really famous speech or sermon that he gave to a bunch of people. Um, and it's to this day regarded as one of the most influential sermons um, ever spoken. And in it, he has this passage where he calls people to follow him, those who believe in him, to be the salt and light of the earth. And it can kind of be a confusing message. It's confusing to be, what does it mean to be salt? Um, and then as we kind of talked about in the first lesson, um, salt means to season the earth uh, with love, with goodness. It means to kind of preserve the earth of the goodness that it has. And that's our mission, being the salt of the earth. And then last week, we talked about being the light of the world. And we talked about the young slave girl with King Naaman, um, how she was the light of the world. She told him about God told him about the healing and that brought Naaman to be a believer in God and she was being a light to him. And this week we're going to continue in that message of what it means to be the light of the world and kind of look at another perspective or another side of what it means to be the light of the world. So today we're going to be looking at Daniel 1. So if you have your Bibles, feel free to open to it. Uh, mine was just handy right in this bookshelf beside me. Um, but if you have it, it's right near the end of the Old Testament, um, and it's, yeah, the book is called Daniel. Uh, and now we're going to be looking at chapter 1 of Daniel. So what you need to know about this passage in Daniel is that Daniel and some of his friends, three of his friends, they were taken from Judah by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And the reason that they were taken is they were very smart. It describes them as being some of the smartest in Israel, some of the smart, smartest young men. They were handsome. They were strong. They had everything going for them. They were trained well in, in wisdom and everything like that. So they're very wise. They're smart. They're strong. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, okay, I'm going to treat these people special and I'm going to give them a special role in my kingdom of Babylon, even though they were taken as slaves. The king kind of says, you know what, I'm going to give them kind of a special position. And he says this, if you read um, chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it talks about Daniel and it says in verse 4, it says they were young men without physical defect and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and sight and competent to serve in the king's palace. And then it says this is what they were to do in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine, and they were to be educated for three years. So what does this all mean? What it's saying is that Daniel and his friends, they're going to be really well educated by the king. They're going to be taken care of, okay? They are living a good life. They've got schooling, really, really good schooling. They can read and learn the language. And the best part of all, is that they're going to be given the royal ration of food. They're going to be given a lot of food and a lot of good food. But Daniel, being a follower of God, being an Israelite, sees an issue in this. You know, him and his friends might have been like, dude, this is sick. Like, we're getting all this free food. We're getting, like, good food, good meat. We're getting wine. Like, we're feasting every single night, and you have a problem with it? And Daniel's like, yes. So he goes and he talks to one of the like head slave, uh, one, of the, one of the head guys underneath King Nebuchadnezzar. And he's talking to him and he's like, hey man, like, we can't eat this food. And he's like, what do you mean you can't eat this food? And he says, well, uh, we believe it's not honoring to our God to eat this food because it was previously, uh, it was previously dedicated or used to worship an idol. It was used to worship a God that is not our God. We believe in only one true God. So we can't do anything that kind of takes part in this worship of other gods. And this, the king's servant, the guy that's kind of above Daniel and, and kind of 
running them or, or leading them, he kind of says, well, you know, I can't just not let you eat this food because the king will see that if you're not eating food, you'll get skinny and weak and then it'll be my problem. You know, he even says the king will probably kill me if he sees that you guys are skinny and weak. So then Daniel, he says, okay, well, I'll show you what it looks like to follow our God and, and let us just eat vegetables and water for 10 days. That's it. All they're going to eat is vegetable and water. And you might be thinking like all of his friends, I just imagine are like, are you kidding me, Daniel? Like now we just have to eat vegetables and waters. That's it for like 10 days. That's all we're going to eat. But we could be eating the king's food, the exact same food that the king is eating. But instead we're eating vegetables. And Daniel's like, yes. Like, don't you know that in the law it says that we can't eat food that's sacrificed to false idols? Don't you understand that that's worshiping another God and not our one true God? So then they kind of all kind of go together and they're like, yeah, you know what, you're right. And at the end of the 10 days of only eating vegetables, the king kind of looks at them and sees and they're actually stronger. They're actually bigger than all the rest. It says they're fatter than the rest of the servants who ate the royal rations. And what does this show? It shows us that Daniel, even though it was dangerous, even though it was really dangerous for him not to follow, sorry, if it was really dangerous for him to follow the king's orders, it was very dangerous for him to be like, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna eat the king's rations. Instead, I'm gonna eat just vegetables. It was dangerous because it might've meant he would have lost this really great life as a servant. You know, he had everything going for him. He got education, he got, good food, he had everything taken care of, clothes, everything, he could have lost that. And it also meant someone else's life was at risk. But he says, no, I trust God and I know that us obeying him is gonna be a good thing. And our God is true and real, so he takes care of us as we obey him. Daniel had faith in God and he knew what it meant to be the light of the world. He knew that even under other powers, even under pressure to do things that aren't maybe honoring to God, he knows that he has to be honoring to God. And he showed his friends the light. You know, he showed his friends what it looks like to follow God. And I think that's a good example, another great example of what it looks like to be the light of the world. You know, being the light of the world, it doesn't necessarily have to be to people who don't know God, to people who don't follow Jesus, you know, people who aren't Christians. We can be the light of the world to our friends in church, um, our friends in school that we know are Christians as well, where we can be like, hey, like remember this is what it looks like to honor God. And trust that that life is the life that we're designed to live and the life that we're meant to live is a life that's honoring to Him. You know, we're meant to be the light of the world and show others what it looks like to follow God. Let me pray for you and then we'll go on. Dear God, thank you for this time that we can come together and study your word. Thank you that you give us a role in your kingdom. You give us a role in your church. We are to be the salt and the light of the world. And thank you that you show us so many examples of what it looks like to be the light of the world. Lord, I pray as we, as we go into our weeks and just the rest of our kind of days, God, that, that we'll be able to be the light of the world. That you'll give us strength uh, when it's tough. You know, you'll be with us when it's hard to honor you, God. Sometimes there's a lot of pressures, there's a lot of things going on, and it's really hard to do what we know is right, God. But I pray that you'll be with us, and that we know that you are with us to give us strength when those times come. God, I thank you for your love and your peace in your name. Amen. Awesome, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, one last thing couple things that I kind of want to mention to you guys before you go is what we have going on on site. If you are local, if you're around the area of Fraser Heights or Surrey, um, we'd love to see you and come to our in-person events. You know, Sunday mornings, we have a 9 a.m. and a 10.30 a.m. service. And we do a junior youth meeting just like this. You know, we teach the same lessons, um, but there's a lot of other junior youth there. We kind of just hang out, have a good time, and, and, and learn more about the word. So again, that's at a 9 a.m. and a 10.30 a.m. service, and we'd love to see you there, and I would love to meet you. The other exciting thing that we have is every single Friday night. On Friday nights, we do uh, youth night. So it's from 7 to 9 p.m., and again, I'd love to meet you there. There we play games, um, and then we do a sermon as well, and there's a snack. Sometimes we have Italian sodas. We just love to see you there, and I know I would love to meet you, and we have a whole leadership team 
that would love to meet you and a lot of students that you can meet and hang out with. All right, guys, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week.